caves are unknown. Without the exact information from Evan's report, no one would ever find their way up here. Let's hope that you are right. We are, you know, in the border area, and I really do not want to make the acquaintance of overly nervous border patrols. I'll stay at the entrance and keep an eye out. Let me know when you have found something. For sure. Without Oleg, I never would have found this cave. A small round hole in the rock. It could come from a yak. An excerpt from the travel journal of a certain Dr. Evans. My father considered getting these documents to be so important that he intentionally coded all documents that deal with the subject. Patterns were chiseled into the rock here. I wonder what they mean. Pretty big rock. The water is crystal clear and most likely ice cold. The poor guy must have fallen in there. I wonder if he was a member of my father's expedition. I can't reach it from here. It's too heavy. I can't move it. lucky that there is another drain, otherwise the entire cave would probably be underwater already. The bag was next to the skeleton, and the rising waters brought it to the surface. This means that the contents can't be that heavy. Oh, a bone. It looks weird. Somehow unnatural. The bone caught on something. I can't get it out anymore. This room emanates a weird atmosphere. I can't describe it exactly. Unreal as if one is entering a different world. These lines and circles look almost like the sketches that Manuel Perez made in Cuba. Small humans flee from a huge unshapely object into a cave. The head was chiseled directly out of the massive rock face. It depicts the fall of a huge unshapely object. The broken down trees around the crash site remind me a bit of photos that I once saw of the Tunguska region after the 1908 catastrophe. There's this light coming up from down there that bathes the room in this strange atmosphere. Strange disc. Really looks rather insignificant, but it feels warm. And I have the feeling as if some sort of weird energy is emanating from it. I'll show it to Oleg. Maybe he's got an idea about what we should do with it. Oleg! I was just coming to you! I see you really did it. Congratulations. We were not mistaken about you. Thanks. What do you mean by... I'll explain that later. The boss is waiting.
Kambersky to station. Requesting permission to land. Ah, Oleg, I heard you actually found this metal thing? Hello, Sergei. Yes, everything actually went as we hoped. The girl was really good. Excellent work. The boss will be pleased. Now what are we going to do with her? The boss's orders were clear. Is that really necessary? Well, it is a shame with that cute ass. But with some luck, it'll keep fresh on ice. <laughs> and now, turn the water on. Okay. Nothing. What a piece of crap! The damn thing's broken again! Let's see what the problem is. We should hurry, though. The prototype is as good as ready for use. You see, and the boss is waiting for us. And the little one? We won't be gone long. We'll take care of her later. There's a piece missing here. Looks like it was torn out. Sabotage? Could be. You take care of it. I have to get back to our scientific genius. Okay. and I'm totally freezing. Where am I? I can only vaguely remember that Oleg knocked me out. But why? I really thought he was someone I could trust. Yet another bad judgment. A bathtub filled with bubbles, a glass of red wine, and someone to massage my back. I think I want to go home. A video camera in the bathroom? I wouldn't want to take a shower in here. I can't reach it. This thing helps unclog stopped up toilets. Extra soft and fluffy three layers. A stationary drill. A metal bit is in it. It works! I'll take everything with me that is not on the trees by the time I count to three. I have a vague idea. You can do thread cutting with that. I know, a very risky assumption. But you can't win if you don't try. It reminds me of the part I found in Moscow at the train station. In the meantime, it appears to have entered series production. Now it even has a rubber coating on the grip. You can use this to seal windows or become a lifeguard on TV. A metal plate. A vice, standard equipment in any shop that has at least half the equipment it needs. Could be a kind of master key that can be replicated in the workshop as needed. The door is locked. The lock is completely iced over. I can't get the key into it. A single egg is visible through the plate of glass. The machine can probably be opened with key commands. I do not know the number combination, and if I just simply break the glass, then the contents will probably be destroyed by the falling glass splinters. A metal plate. 
Shrill set the paper on fire. I actually managed to create a little fire with the drill. Not bad, Nina. Not bad at all. I should have learned by now that I can't simply hold metallic items into the fire without burning my fingers. I'm going to freeze to death pretty soon, but at least the key is nice and warm now. The hot key is melting the ice, so the lock is now open. Looks like an elevator shaft, but the elevator is nowhere to be seen. What a strange design. I think I read somewhere that stuff like this was used to protect sensitive equipment from radio interference. How am I supposed to get across? Fly? I assume that by entering numbers, one can extend a bridge to the room on the other side. I don't have the slightest clue what I should enter. And what happens if I enter the wrong combination too many times? I should look around for clues first. A freight elevator. But there doesn't appear to be a way to summon the elevator up from here. Oh, this appears to be something like a control room. And what is that down there? Problem solved? Not quite. But at least I found our saboteur. There was a terrible, regrettable accident just now. That's too bad. What's going on with the water? That isn't important right now. I need you here. All right. May I introduce you to Professor Charleroi, our scientific leader? Pleased to meet you. Yeah, sure. Save it. We don't have time. The boss will be here soon, and I want to have everything ready to go by then. Oleg, Sergei, and this Nicole Charleroi seem to be like a kind of complete assembly of all the human scum on Earth. Right now, I'm really tempted to jump through the window and send all three of them to... But what are they doing down there? And what kind of machine is that? I don't know for sure what is going on here, but I'm really sure that it is something quite nasty. And this I know. As soon as I get even the slightest chance, I will mess up their plans, but big. It all looks terribly complicated, at least for someone who knows frighteningly little about it. There are 3,000 switches here, and not one is labeled. I'm not even going to try it. A huge plasma screen. What do they need all those video recorders for? None of them has a cassette inside. A single piece of explosive is still in there. I think I'll take it with me. I think that's a water pump. It's not running, though. I assume it is responsible for the running water and the heating. That's probably why it's so cold in here. It's not making a sound. Something isn't right. Salt. Probably from the bag up there. That little bit is just enough for a breakfast egg. No idea what that does. Nothing is happening. Maybe the switch is broken. The freight elevator does not appear to be very stable. One of the cables has already broken, and the one next to it doesn't look like it is going to last much longer either. The platform hangs too high. I can't reach the stuff. 
a completely normal fishing rod without any kind of frills, but rather robust. That's the way outside. I'm already freezing my butt off in here, and it's not going to be any warmer out there. Ten polar bears couldn't get me out of here while I'm wearing these clothes. A freight elevator, but there doesn't appear to be a way to summon the elevator up from here. A completely normal fishing rod without any kind of frills, but rather robust. Maybe I can pick up one of the lighter packs. Winter clothing, that's a nice catch. Much better already. Terry cloth bedding, a whole stack of it. Whatever am I supposed to do with it? The other stuff on the platform is too heavy to be able to pull it up with the fishing rod. Somebody please tell me that I'm dreaming. Just where am I? Antarctica? Nobody is ever going to find me here. I can forget about that. Just how did they get all that heavy equipment here? It must have been a huge logistical effort. Building the station probably cost a lot of money. Somebody must be counting on getting a lot of profits. A 10 liter bucket. A huge field full of these strange things. I assume that they contain antennas, but what do you do with them? Receive signals or send signals? The power consumption of this facility must be gargantuan. Wow, an old whaling ship, completely enclosed in ice. I wonder how long that has been here. It appears as if there had been a hole in the ice at one time, but it has frozen over almost completely in the meantime. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to get the hole open again with only my bare hands. The jacket is frozen stiff but it appears that there is still something in the side pocket. I don't think it will contain any vodka, but in this cold, I would be happy with whiskey too. If I only could get this damned cork out of this bottle. It contains whale oil. People also used to use it as lamp oil and lubricant. It's a little heavy. Not even female Russian shot putters can carry that. The bedding has soaked up fish oil. It is beastly heavy and stinks like one too. A stationary harpoon. The things have an enormous penetrative ability and a relatively large operational range. What am I supposed to fire at? I haven't really been able to find that many real potential targets here yet. seems to be sitting on something. He's probably hatching something. A warning sign. Caution. 
precipice. There's someone lying there. Hello? Are you hurt? Hello? I almost fear that he's dead. Funny that someone should fall into the glacier's precipice, who probably knows his way around here. Plus, there was a warning sign. Just a moment. It could, of course, be that he had a little help when he fell. I believe these people here are capable of that. It almost looks as if they let the poor guy die in misery down there. I really have to watch out. A human life does not appear to be worth much out here. This goes down so deep, I can't even guess where the bottom is. The shield was stuck in there. Wow, what an explosion! It appears that it even triggered a small avalanche but it didn't appear to bother the penguin. I know that robbing dead bodies is frowned upon in upper circles, but I cannot do anything for him anymore. He, however, could perhaps still be helpful. A couple torn out pages they're entitled, Research Journal of Nicole Charleroi. I don't think that this information will help me right now, but I might at least understand better how everything ties together. A gasoline lighter. Unfortunately, there is no gas in it. In an abstract sort of way, the amulet represents a head. There is a large diamond on top. It looks to be very old, and if the diamond is real, it is worth a fortune. It always looks so simple in detective stories. Plunger on the glass, cut it with a diamond, and... It really is simple. I have no idea what animal this comes from. It's too large to be a chicken egg, but who knows what they are doing here in the station. I think they are capable of anything. The bedding has soaked up fish oil. It is beastly heavy and stinks like one too. So I leave behind yet another trail of devastation. That would be enough for a lot of breakfast eggs. Well, it will probably take some time until the salt has eaten its way through the ice.
penguin seems to be sitting on something. He's probably hatching something. It appears as if there had been a hole in the ice at one time, but it has frozen over almost completely in the meantime. The salt ate a huge hole into the ice. Nothing is happening. I probably should try it with some bait. The lighter could serve as a blinker substitute and lead all in one. It's definitely worth a try. That was easier than I thought it would be. A specimen of the genus fish. Maybe I can distract it with some fish. At least now the poor little guy has a real chance of seeing something come out of that egg. An egg-shaped thing made of metal. It fits, and the machine is also starting to work again. Missing. The water is going to drain right out again. So, pulled the cork in style. It even reasonably fits into the drain. That should stop the water from draining. Yay! The tub is full. Woohoo!
too bad, actually. It was just about to get nice and warm. I hope that the ice will hold me. The camera has been screwed on tight, but at least I could remove the strap. Oh, there is something else on the tape. A remainder of another recording. Looks like the room right next door. This Nicole Charlera is having a discussion with a really elegantly dressed guy. Unfortunately, his back is to the camera. But I could swear that it's... What's going on down there? I heard we are ready. Yes, apart from a few small details, everything is ready. Thanks to the artifact, we were able to quickly bring the radiation fields to the desired level. So I was right. About the artifact? About you, Professor Charleroi. Your team has truly done magnificent work. And Sergei, Oleg, you also deserve a lot of praise. Thank you. It was an honor for us. But enough self-congratulations. We still have a lot to do. Mankind is waiting for us to relieve them from a few decisions. Massimo Gartuzo? If he's involved in this, it must be a really big thing. And if he goes to the ends of the world just for this, then I'd rather not dwell on how big this thing is. Realistically, there are only two possibilities. Either I make sure there is a super big noise, or I die clandestinely, quietly, and unnoticed. And since I definitely do not feel like dying, I should think of something that makes a huge kaboom. Only I probably won't be able to do much by myself. I need help, and I need it fast. Two, five, one, three, done it. I wonder what is waiting for me in that room over there. All of the equipment looks to be completely out of date. They obviously only invested in stuff that was absolutely necessary. full of fireworks. I think I'll take a couple with me, and probably the matches too. Equipment for measuring and analysis. What exactly can one do with it? I haven't got the faintest idea. There is something in the close vicinity of the research station, most likely an airplane. Maybe they can come and get me out of here. I just have to get their attention somehow.
Hopefully the fuses will work again if I pour the whale oil over them. Flares. I assume that they are used to mark the landing spot for helicopters and airplanes. It's not what you think. Typical statement from a man. They aren't our enemies. They want to help us. I've had my fill lately of people who allegedly want to help me. Yeah, I know. I'm really sorry about Oleg. How did you know? Later. These men have brought me here to... So you are in cahoots with them. They're the same guys who were seen in the museum by the janitor and the little girl when my father was kidnapped, right? Yes, and the sect did actually kidnap your father. But for his own protection. Don't worry. He's fine. For his protection? From people like you? You played me for a sucker and were working with these guys the entire time! No. When I got back from Ireland, the sect also kidnapped me. Then they explained how everything fits together. I've never seen these guys before that. You have to believe me. Do I? During his investigation into the Tunguska catastrophe, your father stumbled onto something that has to be kept secret at all costs. The sect has done everything it can to make sure this secret doesn't fall into the wrong hands. And what is that? The people believe that they are the offspring of aliens from outer space. Oh, God. And the Tunguska catastrophe was caused by a nuclear-powered interstellar spaceship that crashed while trying to rescue its last living survivors from Earth. Bullshit! Psst. Don't tell me you believe that. I don't know what I should believe anymore. Do you remember your encounter with the sect? In Tunguska? Yes. It was pretty weird. The fact is that in the summer of 1908, an unidentified object was annihilated in a detonation as powerful as a modern hydrogen bomb. But they found no crater and no remains. Then these strange fragments appeared years later. Your father examined them and discovered that they were made from materials that didn't come from Earth, but were processed. The Kalenkov report? Exactly. Then the military got a hold of the material, and your father was prohibited from doing any more research. When he and Manuel Perez took off again for the Tunguska region, Perez accidentally became a victim of an experiment that the military was conducting with the extraterrestrial object there. Your father realizes how dangerous the material is, but he continues to do research despite... or maybe because of it. Until he comes across evidence of the Zopa, whose abandoned caves he discovers in China. There he discovers artifacts that consist of the same extraterrestrial material as the fragments from the Tunguska region. A strange connection, don't you think? And one of the artifacts is here now, delivered personally by Nina Kalenkov. The station belongs to a man named Massimo Gartuso. Have you ever heard his name before? Billionaire. Divorced three times. Devastatingly handsome. You can ask him for an autograph in a second. What? He's here. I saw him below in the station. Hopefully we aren't too late. He bought shares in all the telecommunication companies through middlemen and will soon control the entire mobile network. So what? Are you afraid that the prices per minute will go up? Be serious for a second, Nina. Don't you have any idea what they're planning here? Think about Perez's accident, the psychiatric clinic in Cuba, the French female scientist, and the Russians' animal experiments. Give me a hint. They are working on a technology that will manipulate thoughts. Oh, come on. First you come to me with... With these aliens, and now this? It sounds inconceivable, I know. But research into this technology is nothing new. As far as I know, no one has been successful yet. But with this extraterrestrial material... Do you think that Massimo Gartuso will go to so much trouble if the artifact was merely of value archaeologically? The sect believes that he is about to implement this technology. And you can imagine what will happen then. So, 
Do you trust these people? More than I trust this Gartuso. And what are you planning to do? The sect will take care of detonating the transmitter, and we have to find a way to disrupt the experiment itself. Are you familiar with the layout in there? Is there maybe a control room or something like that? Sure. Follow me and try to be inconspicuous. Yes, sir. Oh, before I forget, I found your cell phone in the caves in China. I thought you'd probably need it. In case you want to call me after all this is finished. I know your number by heart. So, the elevator should be working again. But maybe we should wait until the sect members have detonated the antenna. And if not, we still have the element of surprise on our side. So you really want to go down there? Yes. Now let's go. Damn, what just happened? The elevator appears to still be working, as do some of the doors, but I can't open the other ones. Nina! Can you hear me? Just great. I have to get the doors open as soon as possible or we'll have a real problem. We've had more than enough of those already. Hopefully Nina will wait for me and won't do anything stupid. But if I know her, she probably will. Max doesn't seem to hear me through the door. Now what? Hopefully he'll get the door open again. But I can't really wait for him to do it. We have no time to lose. Maybe that elevator still works. Then I can look around a little downstairs. Someone took the knob that opens and closes the vent. There's just a rod left now. I can't open or close the valve with my bare hands. A radiator. The radiator feels cold. I hear voices behind that door. As long as I don't have an army behind me, I really shouldn't go in there. What an enormous icicle. I can't break it loose. It's much too massive for that. An iron chain hanging in the middle of the room. No idea what that's good for. There are two labels on it. Danger, explosive, and do not bring in contact with water. For such dangerous stuff, that vat sure doesn't make a stable impression. This wrench ought to make sure that the lid doesn't open accidentally. Hopefully the lid won't open. The sign warns that contact with water could trigger chemical reactions. The paint is so brittle that it crumbles just looking at it. The sign is riveted. The paint stuck to the silicone. With a little imagination, you can see the sign again. The peeled off paint from the shield is now on the silicone impression. The no water symbol can be made out halfway clearly. In some places where the walls have cracked, the ice is visible behind the walls. We must therefore be below sea level. When I wedged the icicle between the pipes, the nut broke from the mounting bracket of the pipes. I threaded the rod. Phew, 
No chance. That's it then. The vent is open. The pipe is cold. The radiator is gurgling and is cold. I guess there isn't enough water in the pipes. Water? Heat? There's no water in the heating unit? I'll see if I can find a control unit for the water feed. I hope that was the right switch. There seems to be enough water in it now, but the radiator is still not heating up. If my plan works and Max understands my clues, the heater will get warm, and so will the pipes with the icicle between them. When it melts and slides out of the pipes, it will hopefully push the vat from the shelf onto the floor. And as soon as the vat cover opens and the highly explosive chemical comes into contact with the ice on the floor, it will go kaboom! A great fuse! If I could somehow get out of here, I should close the valve again afterwards, otherwise this whole joint will blow with me and Max inside! There's no flame lit in the heating unit? Well, then let's look for the right button that fires it up. So, that should have been it. Ah, oh, damn it! Nina, look out! So I did hear right. The lady did actually manage to free herself. Well then, come along. The boss is already eagerly waiting to make your acquaintance. Ah, Miss Kalinkov. We finally meet in person. Please excuse my bad manners. I would have introduced myself much sooner, but as you can see, I'm under quite a bit of stress. Allow me to introduce myself, Massimo Gartuso. Kidnapping, aggravated assault, and whatever else you ordered to do. So you're considering that good form? No, but special circumstances unfortunately demand special measures. But since you are already here, may I offer you a front row seat for the world premiere? Thanks, but I'm not interested. Then you'll really be missing something. You will witness how my new marketing measures will lead humanity into a happier future. I can't wait. As you should. I'm sure you're familiar with it. You spend days thinking about which dress you should buy, and then you have a fight with your boyfriend about whether you should buy the red or the green couch. I don't need a couch, and certainly not a green one. I will relieve humanity from these problems in the future. Through brainwashing? I call it help in decision making. It will not only save people a lot of trouble, but they will also have more time to concentrate on really important things. You have to admit, it's a truly noble gesture on my part. I have to admit, you're even sicker than I thought. All you care about is selling your products. You don't give a shit about the people. What a shame that you don't appreciate my plans. Don't worry though, you won't be in the position to take offense. And now, if you'll please excuse me, I have to prepare for the first test run. And if I can offer you a word of advice, be happy that you will be allowed to witness this spectacle. It would be a shame if you couldn't enjoy your last hours on Earth, wouldn't it? It can't be much longer until the icicle slips from the pipe. I have to get out of here, fast! I really trusted that guy. How could I be so stupid? I would like... Quiet! Professor Charleroi has to concentrate. I think I may have something you've been looking for. Oh, the part from the water pump? Thank you very much. We will reward you with a painless death. How friendly of you. Oleg, put that thing back in there quickly so that it's nice and warm again up in the station when we celebrate our triumph. Okay. You will watch our guest of honor. I don't think that our princess wants to run away, do you? No, of course not. It's terribly comfortable here. On first impression, she seems quite nice, but this is obviously utterly wrong. His pseudo-charming way hides a textbook archetypal slick and unscrupulous supervillain. In case you're interested, a sect has just arrived. They're about to destroy your equipment on the surface. 
Yeah, sure. Who is leading them? Superheroes who are saving the world? I'm serious. I think you're missing my point. And now please excuse me, I don't have time to talk. To build all these devices here at the edge of the world, that must have been a huge effort. What's it all for? The equipment is extremely sensitive. Do you see the big display back there? It's hard to overlook. The project is strictly monitored, because incorrect radiation could lead to a malfunction. We've therefore played it safe and built part of the complex underground. A loading crane. I see no way to operate the crane from down here. Damn it, we have some interfering radiation here somewhere. If we don't get it under control quickly, we'll have to stop the experiment. Massimo wants to realize his sick plans with it. One of those monitoring cameras again. What? Nina, what are you trying to say? I don't understand. A loading crane. I see no way to operate the crane from down here. You mean escape using the crane? We'll see if that goes well. But I don't have a better idea, so let's give it a shot. Good luck, Nina. It's getting warm up there, and the champagne is being chilled. This means that there is nothing standing in the way of our party. The celebration will have to wait. We have some serious problems here. Sorry that I was wrong about you, but Oleg was very convincing and... That's okay. I'm a man. I don't hold a grudge. Come on, we've got to get to the airplane. The people from the sector are probably already waiting for us. Idea, but they'll manage. Let's get out of here. Yeah, my father's probably already waiting. Thanks? Yeah? Have I thanked you yet? No, I don't think so. Hmm, the plane must have an autopilot function. Camera's rolling. And I'd like to help you too. I don't need to go to bed anymore anyway, and I can always sleep when I'm dead. So, if I can do something for you... That's really nice. Here's looking at you, kid. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my line. <laughs> Cut! <laughs> you know the difference between me and you? I make this look good. Cut! 
Just because I'm filming a shitty film for some shitty people doesn't mean that I enjoy being an actor. I was not outstanding, and I was not exceptional. I was monumental. I was epochal. Camera's rolling. <laughs> Prop guy, please bring the big iron bar this time. What a comedian. Camera's rolling. Hmm. If my eyes don't deceive me, the stodgy could now look a lot like... Cut! <laughs> I can't stand taking the train, sorry. Let's film the scene again. 